What's up YouTube, Jeff back again, and today I'm continuing my coverage of the Pixel 4 and the Pixel 4 XL. I've made already made a couple videos with this device. I made my first 10 things to do video, which is very popular. If you guys got one of these phones and you want to know how to set it up, what the, I do out of the box, you know, settings and things like that, I'll drop it below in the description as well as the pinned comment. I also made a detailed battery life review uh, yesterday, which people are enjoying. Did some mathematical analysis with a spreadsheet here in Excel. Um, so if you want to check that, I'll drop it below as well. But today I want to talk about the display. And there's been something that I've noticed and some other people have noticed as well who reviewed the device. And that is the inconsistency of the 90 hertz refresh rate when it activates on the device. Now, Google does not tell you when exactly the 90 hertz is being enabled. In fact, if you go into display, you'll notice that if you go down to advanced, you can see on smooth display, it automatically raises the refresh rate from 60 to 90 hertz for some content, it will increase your battery usage. Um, now, they just don't tell you though when it's going to raise it from 60 to 90 hertz. And that's what a lot of people have been talking about because it's kind of inconsistent. I couldn't really figure out why sometimes I was getting smooth motion 90 hertz and why sometimes I was getting 60 hertz. It's kind of a puzzle to figure out when Google is raising the refresh rate. Well, tonight I was scrolling through Twitter and a lot of you probably follow Michelle Rahman. He's the XDA developer, editor in chief. Great guy to follow for Android related stuff. I want to give him credit as well as the people on Reddit who discovered this because I didn't discover it. I just basically did some testing of my own. They found out that somehow the brightness and the ambient light is related to the refresh rate. So some of the people over on Reddit and Michelle commented on this. I'll show you guys the thread on Reddit as well said, does it look like smooth display is turning off when brightness is under 50%? Uh, so some people did some further digging and Michelle used ADB and Logcat, which is basically um, some command line interface stuff that allows you to test this. And if the brightness is less than 75%, then it appeared that you're actually getting the 60 Hertz. And when it's over 75%, you're getting 90 Hertz. You can see the strings right there that show you the FPS refresh rates based on the various uh, brightness levels. Now, there's a couple of ways you can test it. Of course, you can use ADB just like Michelle did, but there's actually another website which he recommended. They also recommended on Reddit, which is testufo.com. Now, I'm actually gonna show you guys. Uh, right now, I have my brightness up quite a bit. Uh, and so if you head over to that website, we're gonna go to the Test UFO website. You'll see right here, it shows you your FPS and your refresh rate. Both of them are at 90 Hertz right now. Now, what I noticed when I began shooting this video is I was trying to test and see if I turn my brightness down to say 60% or whatever, if that actually does activate going back to 60 Hertz. So I turned it down, you know, quite a bit. You see it's down to like 30% now. And I noticed that the refresh rate actually didn't drop below 90 Hertz. Um, so I was a little befuddled, but obviously I've got my really bright studio lights on. So I was thinking maybe this has to do with the ambient light as well. So it appears if you have really, really bright ambient light, that even if you turn the brightness down all the way, it still keeps you at the 90 hertz. But now if you cover the light sensor, so up here, you'll notice now we get the drop. You can see right here, the drop there. And then eventually, it's kind of hard to see, but there's the 60 hertz. I know it's kind of hard to see on the camera, but there's the 60 hertz. And then as soon as I take away my light, you know, the ambient light sensor being covered up, it's gonna ramp back up to 90. It takes a second for it to refresh um, on the website itself, but it goes back to 90. So if you cover up the light sensor up here at the top, eventually it's gonna drop to 60. You guys can see right there, it drops quite a bit. I just basically covering it up. Even if you don't cover it up all the way, just cover it up a little bit to shield it from the bright light, it goes down to 60. Um, so this is very interesting. Um, obviously, we don't know exactly why Google did this. I'm gonna turn up the brightness again so you guys can actually see here in the video. We don't know why Google did this, perhaps to save some battery. You guys saw in my battery life report uh, that the battery life isn't the best already. So we're wondering if maybe they did this to save battery, but it's also something that I feel like could contribute to some of the variance uh, in the battery life reports. Because obviously, if you're like me, and uh, when you use your device outside a lot, here in Arizona, it's very bright still, even in October. If you use your device outside, the brightness is gonna be up all the time, which means you're gonna be using 90 Hertz all the time. Uh, for the most part. And that, of course, is not necessarily great for battery life. So I wonder if some of the battery life issues, some people are seeing the variance, you know, swings across the reviewers, because it wasn't very consistent, is related to whether or not you use your device in bright lighting or outside versus inside. So overall, very interesting. Again, all the credit goes to Michelle for 
you know, noticing this and also the guys on Reddit who came up with uh, this uh, proposal. It's very interesting and hopefully Google will issue some sort of statement on why exactly they're doing this. Um, they have some ideas. Um, Dylan Raga, I guess, the display analyst at XDA, thinks this has to do with some of the calibration on the display when it's, you know, below a certain brightness threshold. So that's possible as well, but it's very interesting. It has some interesting implications uh, for the reviews. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification icon so I can make future videos like this. I'll be continuing my coverage of the Pixel 4 and Pixel 4 XL on the channel. Lots of other great Android goodies. If you guys want to find me at dopetechdaily.site, Twitter and Instagram with the links in the description. If you have any comments or questions, put them below and I'll be happy to get back to you. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.